Look at that. Absolutely beautiful car, caught on an amazing method. And if you want to find out more, keep watching. But this is one you're not going to want to miss. There we go. Okay, so over Christmas on Facebook, I put a little clip on for me fishing with bomb and corn, but we're doing it with a bit of a difference. We've been quite aggressive, loose feeding lots of corn. And a few of you asked me to do a longer video, more in depth, so I thought, let's do it. So we're here today at Makings Fishery on Lake Free, exactly where we were on that little clip. But we're gonna go into a bit more detail. Now this is a brilliant method for this time of year. We're in February now, but from February to sort of April time, this is fantastic. What it is, we're using bomb and corn, but we're doing it in a much more aggressive style. We want to use this method to actually have a big finish at the end of our session or match. We're trying to create something where in the last hour, the last 90 minutes, you get a run of fish. So I'm talking five to eight fish. You're giving yourself that match winning option. Granted, we could do that on the pole, but when there's a load of you in a line, sometimes you lose your edge because everyone's fishing along the same line. With this, I can get a little bit further out. I'm really aggressive with the loose feed and you can have some really good days. It's primarily a carp tactic, but if there's some big F1s as well, they'll definitely have a chew. So we're gonna get through multiple tins of corn. We'll show you that in a moment, but this is a brilliant method. But the most important thing is we've got to build it up right. This method takes a lot of care and attention. We've got to loose feed it for a long time before it actually comes to fruition at the end of the day. So we've got to talk about what we're going to do in the meantime. So without further ado, let's switch up. We'll swing around on the box and we'll show you how we're going to start this method and how we're going to feed it to get the best from this corn method. Okay, so how are we going to kick off this session and how are we going to feed it to make sure we get the best from this? Now we're, we're faced with a nice sort of open lake today, which is perfect for this bomb and corn approach, what we're going to do. But like I said in the intro, it's probably going to take a couple of hours to get, to get going. So what we're going to do in the meantime, well, I've set up a nice little banjo feeder, proper winter staple really. The reason I've gone for this rather than a straight bomb, sometimes if it was absolutely freezing, I'd probably use a straight bomb and corn and look to chuck it around the lake. But we've had a real spell of mild weather just recently. And I think the fish are probably gonna to come to a little bit of bait rather than that single hook bait. So by creating a nice little trap with a feeder, I can chuck that into different little areas. And I think that they probably are gonna home in on a little bit of bait. So I've set up a nice little banjo, nothing complicated. Got some fishery micros that have been soaked using mixed method in a little Tupperware tub, did them the night before, covered them in water, left them in the fridge, absolutely perfect, brilliant. For the hook for that, I've got myself some different coloured wafters, there's like a pale orange and a white, and I've also got one of my favourite hook baits, Pepperami. Absolute favourite of mine, it's super tough, super smelly, great hook bait on the feeder. And we, like I say, we're going to use that to cast around the swim. It's going to be really effective. We're going to start pretty short, 20 meters or so, and then try and work our way out using the feeder to pick the fish off. But the real business end is later on, the second half of our session. Now I've got three tins of corn with me and I'm hoping to get through it. Just nice corn, got a bit of a mixture in there to be honest. Doesn't really matter as long as it's pretty even grain so you can fire it with some accuracy. Got myself a proper catapult. We don't want to faff around with any of really thin elastic or anything like that. We've got to try and feed this to about 18 to 20 meters. So we don't want our catapults letting us down. Nice strong one. And I'm going to feed, every time I do this, I'm going to feed two pouchfuls of corn every 15 minutes, something like that to start with. And like I say, I'm looking to feed it for probably three hours before I even think about chucking on it. When we actually chuck on it, we'll have a proper look at the kit. But in the meantime, I think we should get that feeder loaded up and start the process of feeding this sweet corn line. Right, so let's get some fishing done. Now I'm going to put just a little six mil wafter on there to start with. I've gone for a little orange one, nice little color. It's quite colored actually today. I want something that's gonna stand out and I've just got one of the medium banjos on. And what I like to do at this time of year, I like to put a really thin layer in my feeder and squeeze it in really, really firmly, almost like a paste. Looks totally wrong, but this time of year, you're just trying to attract one down to your feeder. You're not trying to build a swim or anything. So I just want a lot of smell coming off that feeder. Not actually really offering them much other than my up bait. So I've just pushed that in there almost like a paste and I've just got another thin layer that I'm gonna put over the top. Now, as you know from my videos in the past, I like my hook bait to be as deep as I can get it. So I've done that. Just on top of that firmly squeezed layer. And then we've got to think about where we're gonna chuck it to start with. Now. 
this is where your observation comes in while he's setting up. Now, I've been looking at this lake and I've seen an odd bubble coming up at about 20 metres. That's perfect because it means I can start there and then work my way further out as the fish probably naturally back off throughout the day. Look for signs of fish, look for them topping, rolling, bubbling, and that little bubbling, I'm hoping, is a bit of a giveaway. So we've moulded that feeder and we're just gonna, where I think I've seen them fish, pop this little feeder on it. So we haven't got a line clip on, we're just gonna feather the line in, feather the feeder in to make it plop in rather than splodooshing. Um, but we're gonna try and just give it a nice little cast onto where I think I've seen a few fish. So just like that, nice. Right where I've seen a few fish, just stop the line with my finger and then we're just gonna get that line under. Now, the beautiful thing about this line, this detection, is that it sinks really quick. So I'm hardly putting any, I don't have to pull a line or anything. I've just got the tip nicely under the surface. Line's gonna sink and we're gonna be nicely set and waiting for a bite. And while we're doing that, we're gonna think about where we're gonna loose feed this corn. Now, this is a big open lake, so we're just going to do it in front of us here, but if you was on a lake with maybe islands in it or something like that, my advice would be pick the biggest area of your swim to try this. So if you were at Lindome, for example, where you've got a lot of little dot islands, maybe a gap in the island, loose feed your corn towards the gap, if that makes sense. You want a nice big area of water that gives you the opportunity to pull quite a few fish. If you were to do it in a little na narrow neck end or a little corner or whatever, you're not gonna give yourself any chance of pulling fish with a corn. You want a nice big area of water to pull plenty of fish. Here today, we're fortunate we've got a nice open lake. So I'm just gonna pick a far bank marker and I'm gonna start the process of feeding this corn. So what I've got is a lovely platform. I'm gonna do it ever so slightly to my left so that my line, isn't, my line when I'm feeder fishing isn't running straight through it. I'm just gonna do it slightly to the left so that I'm not potentially spooking some fish. So, We'll get going, let's get a proper amount of corn in that catty. And like I say, we're just gonna do it as far as the catty will get the corn. So right in line with that marker. And if you bottom your catty out every time, in theory, the corns are gonna go the same distance every single time. There we go. And it, it's a massive amount of bait compared to what people are used to in the winter. But corn's very, it goes through the fish quickly. They can get through it. And it's one of those few baits that you can be a little bit more generous with because the fish get through it so easily. So what we're gonna do throughout the day, we're gonna just feed that every, oh, I had a tiny little liner then. We're gonna feed that every sort of 15 minutes and then we'll see how it goes. But we're definitely gonna leave that alone for three hours and we're gonna let the feeder do its magic. We're gonna work the swim with that. Let's see if we can catch a few fish. So in the winter, location's everything. And like I've touched on a few times already, you'll, I'll bore you to tears with this. Location's everything. We've got to look for signs of fish. And actually liners can be a massive giveaway. Already we're getting some tiny little liners and I quite like that. If you're getting those tiny ones, I, I believe that your feed is quite close to the fish when it's like that. If you're getting those big liners, I believe the fish are closer to you. Whereas we're getting tiny little liners now. So I'm thinking that they've got to be within striking distance of that feeder. Now the beauty of this detection is it's got low stretch so you can see the liners really well. It's almost like you've got braid on and every little mo movement is magnified on that tip. So I'm just getting those tiny little liners and I'm convinced that that's fish around the feeder. So I'm willing to bet that it won't take us too many casts to find where the fish are already. Like I say, if I was getting those proper liners that pull your rod in, I think that they're much closer to you. So, I'd be looking at maybe chucking shorter, but because we're getting the lightnings we're getting straight away are all little little tiny knocks. I'm quite happy to sit on this for a bit because I think the fish are probably on the dance floor. Uh, yep. <laughs> yeah. Right, we didn't catch one on the first chuck, so we're just gonna have a quick re-chuck. Did have some liners though, so I do think we're in the right area for a bit of success. So let's just whiz it back out there. So that's nice in position. Let's get that line under. Obviously we've got a lovely flat calm day today. So 
we ain't got to worry about our feeder moon, but if you've got ripping surface skim or anything like that, you've got to get your, your line under. So your presentation's good. Now what's interesting, I had a big liner on the last chuck, like move my feeder. And I picked up thinking it was on. And then and, and it wasn't, messed it up. And now I'm not getting any liners at all. And that's really common in winter when you like dobbing around trying to catch them, like chucking to the fish especially on these big lakes where the fish have got a lot of room to back off to, you don't have to do much wrong to push the fish away from you. And evidently, I think there was some fish there to start with. But as I've had a few liners, saying that, I've just had a liner then, but because I've picked up, I've maybe unsettled what few fish were there. So I'm already thinking next chuck, if I don't catch one, but even if I do, I'm probably going to chuck a little bit further on my next chuck and try and go to where the fish are. Probably, they've probably only backed off a few metres, but you've got to be mindful of stuff like that. You know, if you pick up on a liner, you're potentially pulling that line through the fish and potentially spooking them. And like I say, it doesn't take a lot. A few miscasts or a feeder going in badly or anything like that, especially on calm days like this, can, can push them away from you. So you've got to be really mindful, be really careful what you're doing. And I made a big mistake there picking up on that liner. And I've potentially ruined myself the chance of catching a fish on this chuck. So just bear that in mind. There we go. Well, I talked myself out of getting one that chuck, but it's gone round. Probably been in eight or nine minutes, I'd say. And we got one. I really thought I'd ruined it for myself by picking up at that liner, but sometimes you just got to be patient in winter. And maybe I was expecting things to happen too quickly, but they're generally pretty decent fish in this lake. There's a real mix of F1s and carp in here, but they're generally sort of three pound and above, so. You don't have to catch loads to have a real good day. I'm just using... I'm a big fan of the, uh, using the drag on my reels. And what camp are you in? Are you, are you a backwinder? Are you a, a drag man? I noticed on Facebook the other day we put a clip of Mick playing a barbell on backwinder and a few people were up in arms about it because he wasn't using the drag. I must admit I like a drag. Or even a combination of the two. Just using a nice soft 10 foot rod today, which is perfect for this kind of range. I'm just keeping it nice and low. Drag set. Pretty loose to be fair. But with this line, because it's got, I'm not going to say it's got no stretch, but it's got minimal stretch. You can feel everything and you can really control the fish. It's lovely. And a great bite, just pull the rod in, which is obviously what you're looking for when you're fishing the method. Looking for that proper toe round, which I didn't do on that other chuck when I picked up a, a liner. Bugged me that, as you can probably tell. Just take our time. For those interested, I've got an 017 hook length on. Size 14 hook, which is about right for a, a little 6mm wafter. If we're using an 8mm eight, eight wafter, I'd probably go up to a 12 but for this, right, there we go. Little orange wafter hanging out of his chops there. Look at that. Some of them pellets are still in the feeder, would you believe it, after all that time. So but that's a good thing, I think. When you're waiting for, for bites, you want some attraction still in your feeder. You don't want it all to just come flooding out and you're left with nothing around your feeder. If you squeeze it in nice and firm, you've always got something to attract the fish. So I said on that chuck, I was going to go a little bit further, which I'm going to do because I, I do think I have pushed... If there was a bit of a bulk of fish in front of me, I do think I've pushed them away from me slightly, even though I did catch one. So that waft is still good. So let's go again with that. Like I said, I'm just going to thumb in a nice firm, nice firm layer of pellets. So there's always something in there. And then a bit of a skinnier layer on top. And I've made a, like a bit of a mental note of where that feeder went last time. There's like a tree line. So I'm just going to try and go couple of metres further. Still, we're not working with a line clip or anything, so it's important to stop the feeder with your finger and sort of let it plop in rather than just letting it go in and crash in. So let's get it in there. Just slowing it down, plopped in, and I reckon that's probably gone three or four metres further. We're not, 
we're not working on exact. And then just as before, get that line under it. It sinks so fast, look at that, it's almost under already. Unbelievable, look at that. And we're set. Now, I'd love to tell you, and a true pro would now set a stopwatch, but I've just got my stopwatch out, my, uh, my seat box and the battery's dead. So <laughs> we can't do that. But I reckon that, that bite was somewhere between eight and 10 minutes. And then the first thing I'm thinking about is getting this corn fed. So just as before, proper amount of corn, bang in line with that far bank marker. I'm trying to stick to every sort of 10 to 15 minutes of that. And I'm gonna get my head down now, work this swim, try and catch a few more, and enjoy this fishing before that bomb and corn really kicks in later. So we've had a great couple of hours fishing. Um, as predicted, we started on that sort of, I don't know what it was, 20, 25 meter sort of chuck. Nicked one early after uh, a few liners and bits and bobs. Uh, nicked one early and then the fish have backed off and I've chucked much further now. Probably, I'm lucky today that I'm here on my own, but if there were anglers on the other bank, they'd obviously push the fish to the middle, but the fish have backed well away from me and they're actually past the middle now. And I'm chucking to them and we're getting real regular bites now. Quick bites as well, under 10 minutes. It's really good fishing. And as promised, we're just feeding that all the time. It's really good this is because it's giving me much longer to feed that corn line. Like I'm, I'm allowing that to just do its thing, slowly but surely build and build and build. Still sticking to that routine of feeding every 10 to 15 minutes, two pouches of corn. And to be honest, I'm, I'm itching to get on it, but I'm going to stick to the stick to the plan. Wait till we've been fishing for three hours, then I'll have a look just to see if I can, if I can get some signs and some liners and stuff on it. I know we're on the right path, and it might just happen. So, session's going really well. We've found some fish. They're actually, for those interested, they're in my fishing position ever so slightly to the right. That seems to be where they are. There's an odd one poking his head out. I'm seeing an odd bubble because, like I say, it's flat calm, and that is where they are. We're getting an odd F1, but mainly proper nice carp. And I've actually switched up. I've put the old Pepper Army up bait on, and I'm just using like a six mil. Oh, just got a little tap. There, the F1s they are. They're just a little jag on the on the tip. They're a bit of a, a bit of a nuisance. They're only little diddy ones, but we're really waiting for those proper carp. And. Uh, I'm just using the pepper army, like a little six mil punch of it. And it's a great up bait. It's one of those that I guess we probably don't use, but it, it's really durable. It stinks and it's nice and pale and it's quite buoyant in the water as well. So you're getting like the same effect as a wafter, but you've got proper food on the end. You've not got something that's pretend on the end, like a wafter. <laughs> you've got something that's actual food on the end, which I like. So. Fills me with confidence, and we've got one of these lovely little left ones that are just new in this lake. These have really honed in on the bait now. They will be fishing years to come, they will. Look at that little beauty. And it's, you can see how robust the hook bait is because oh, it's still on there. So we're going to plug away with this. We've got about another hour, I reckon, of feeding that bomb and corn before we have a look at it but we're just continuing. Now we've found these fish well past middle. We'll keep going and then we'll come back to you when this bomb and corn gets going. Well, we've had a brilliant few hours. Searching around with this banjo feed has been been really good, really effective. But this is the last one and I just can't help myself now. I'm gonna go, I'm gonna switch my uh, little ICS setup over. I'm gonna put a bomb on it, longer hook length. And we'll have a go on that corn line that we've been lovingly feeding all day from the off. And uh, let's just pop that out. But the fishing's been great. 
Real nice fish in this lake free, they're like up to sort of six pound. So let's swap that kit over and see if all that loose feed has been paying off. Okay, so I just checked my phone and it's 20 past two. That's full accuracy, full disclosure for you, isn't it? So it's the perfect time to drop on the corner. I'm not gonna lie, I've just had a cheeky go just to see if there's any fish there. And it went straight round, which is exactly what we wanna see. Now all I'm using is a size 16 Camasan Animal Feeder. I've got 017 Reflow Power Hook Length. Again, it was the same setup, I've just switched it over, so we've got six pound detection on the reel. My hook length is about 18 inches. I, I, in winter, I do like a slightly longer hook length when I'm bombing corn fishing. I do think they watch it coming down and obviously that gives it chance to. And because it's such a small, sharp hook, I've got no problem with the bolt effect. The lead, again, like I say, we've just been using the old ICS, so I've just got a little 15 gram bomb on there. Absolutely perfect. So that's the whole setup, as simple as that. Now we've been feeding it for all this time and we don't want to ease up or change because at the end of the day we've been feeding it every 10 to 15 minutes so we don't really want to break that cycle. It's very easy when you go on something, you start feeding it more often. You've got to remember to try and keep it as settled as possible. So we just caught a fish off camera and we're going to firstly reset the trap. So two decent amounts of corn, just like you would bomb and pellet fishing. And then I'm going to just chuck to the back edge of my feed the best I can. So just, just past the centre of that sort of feed zone. And then we're just going to set that trap. And hopefully, judging by the last fish we just caught off camera, it won't take us too long. Exactly the same. Get that line down, set your little trap. And then hopefully, fingers crossed, we get absolutely towed in several times now before the end of the session or if it was a match say you finish at three or half three you get maybe that last hour and this is what this is all about that last hour last hour and a half a strong finish but I, it was noticeable when we were fishing that banjo it was almost like the fish had spread out so you weren't getting that effect where you chuck into the big balls of fish like we were at the start fish had spread out we were catching a lot of f1s and stuff we would just limp into the end of the match, whereas this has potential to give us a real strong finish. And you never know, you might, you might catch two or three, but you might catch seven or eight, and that could easily be another 30 pounds. So well worth doing. And it's, it's a tactic that's working on a lot of venues at the moment. People who are daring to be a little bit different, a bit more aggressive, because of course it doesn't just work for carp and F1s. You can, it has a knack of catching big skimmers as well. So if you're on a lake, like the lake behind me, Lake Four, where there's a lot of nice bream in there, you can expect a few of those as well. So, real good tactic, and we're just going to wait now. I'll probably be a little bit less patient with this in casting times. I'm probably going to give it seven or eight minute casts to start with. And because obviously the, the corn spreads out naturally when you feed it, it's very hard to be super accurate with your loose feed with corn. I've got a nice big area, so I'm just going to, I'm not too worried about where it lands. As long as it goes to the back end of that, loose feed, if that makes sense. But I'm, I'm happy to just dot it around a little bit as well. And hopefully just pick off fish. So let's settle in, pour myself a drink and let's see if we can get a real good finish on the corn. Whoa, that didn't take long. <laughs> Look at that. And that's the difference because we've, we've, the fish have come to the feed, we're not going to the fish. So the fish that are there are feeding. And that's the difference to when you're picking them off using a feeder or a straight bomb and chucking it around with bomb and bread and stuff. The f that You're ca catching the fish on their terms in that situation. Whereas this, it's on our terms now. We've built it up, we fed them. And this is when you can do your big damaging matches because a bit like when you're fishing like pole and maggots with F1s in the winter where you've fed a line for a long time and then when they finally rock up, they're there and happily feeding. This is exactly the same. And because we've passed the pole line, we've got it to ourselves as well because the pole anglers will be fishing 13, 14 metres. We've got this nice little area just past pole, sort of pole range. And because we give them a load of bait, they're dead confident. And that was a quick bite again. Just like the one we caught off camera. Real quick bite. And another nice 
lake free carp and that is the difference with this tactic proper fish they're happily feeding and, and the, the, the speed at which we've caught them two carp I would now think we're going to catch several more and when it comes to hook baits I'll always start on single corn because at the end of the day that's what we're feeding but sometimes you'll be getting liners and stuff and not actually getting the proper bite so you might need something that's a little bit more stand out perhaps so don't be frightened to try a hair with double corn on that's a really good hook bait double corn a bit more of a standout option but just like we were doing with the uh, feeder earlier don't be frightened to put a bit of the old pepper army on as well a nice eight mil puncher pepper army nice big smelly bait can work really well once again let's set that trap and then try and get ours just to the back edge of it nice I'm excited now this is how we want it so let's hope we get as quick a response this chuck as what we just did That line sinks so fast. Didn't even get a chance to have me brew that hatch up. Lovely day as well. What can be, what's not to like about this? And we've used the same rod for both styles. We've used the same setup for the feeder as what we are doing for the bomb. We just swap that lead in the feeder around and put a different hook length on. And we're, we're fishing a different style, so. Wait for the next tow round. <laughs> hey, up. Oh. Hey, as quick as that, look. And that is just amazing how that can come together like that. And it's all because we've spent the time to feed it properly. And this is a smaller fish, but it's a quick bite. We literally, not even two minutes that's been in there. And it's only an F1, but again, we're catching. It's just totally different to how it was on the feeder. So I'm going to enjoy a bit of this and we'll come back with the final scores on the doors in a minute. Look at that lovely little F1. So we've caught four now, four nice fish on the bomb and corn. And I know what you're thinking, you're fishing this, you're probably thinking you're fishing this very similar to sort of bomb and pellet. You're loose feeding, you're casting over your loose feed. Why aren't you using pellets and why are you using corn? It's quite simple, it's the fact that it's the time of the year. If I was to use pellets, there's a great chance I could fill the fish up. Nuisance fish, your roach, your skimmers and stuff, aren't gonna clear it out. Whereas with corn, everything eats it. Like absolutely everything eats it. So there's a good chance, even when there's no carp there, the bait's getting cleared out, which I think is really important in winter. And it allows me to be super aggressive. I can feed lots of it, create a big disturbance, a lot of noise that draws inquisitive fish when it's time to feed. But, but just like that, I know there's not, I'm getting really quick bites. So that can't mean there's that much bait on the bottom. Even though I'm firing in loads of corn, there can't be loads of bait on the bottom, otherwise I wouldn't be getting these quick bites. Whereas I think pellets at this time of year, hard pellets, there's a great chance I could have a nasty build-up of bait out there. And I'm not saying you wouldn't catch on pellets, but I just think that corn at this time of year is a much better option. And if you can use it, like I said earlier, you might catch big F1s, you might catch skimmers, you're going to catch carp, but everything's eating it. And I think that's a massive, massive thing in winter. We're giving ourselves a chance for this big finish, which we're having today, which is just absolutely textbook. It's great. And um, and I just don't think you get that with pellets, personally. I just think you're potentially giving yourself a situation where you get a, a build-up of bait on the bottom, and that is the last thing we want. I need a discarder on that. So, yeah, this time of year, certainly up until about end of March, 
use corn and you'll catch loads of fish. So there we go. I think that's five, it might even be six proper carp we've had at the end there on the old bomb and corn. It's gone even better than I could have expected actually and they're absolutely ripping it up now. And it just goes to show you that being brave, trying something a little bit different can be a real winner in winter. We've picked off those fish on the feeder earlier on, but ultimately we've had that really great finish on the bomb and corn. So something you should definitely give a try. It's a real winner.